Welcome to the Happy Hormones Coach Podcast, your go-to source for all things women's health. I'm here to guide you through the ups and downs of hormonal changes, helping you understand how these shifts impact every aspect of your life. So whether you're in the perimenopause phase or really any other phase of life, looking to improve your overall well-being or just seeking practical tips on stress management, nutrition and fitness, then this podcast is for you. Join me as we explore holistic and functional approaches to health, share expert insights from guests, and empower you to feel your best at every stage of life. Before we dive into today's episode, I want to remind you that the information shared in this podcast is for educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any medical condition. Always consult with your healthcare provider before making any changes to your health regimen. Hey, Hormone Hotties. Welcome back to the Happy Hormones Coach Podcast. Today, we're ta- we're taking a deeper look at blood sugar balancing and why it's not just about what's on your plate. Sure, food is a big piece, but lifestyle, stress, and even sleep can affect blood sugar more than we realize. I'll be breaking this all down simply and practically so you'll have tips that you can use in your day-to-day life. So whether you're struggling with afternoon energy crashes, let's say around two or three, feeling hangry, which is hungry and angry, or just curious about why blood sugar balance matters for hormones and overall health, this episode is for you. So let's dive in. Let's start with the basics of blood sugar. When we eat, Carbs or carbohydrates break down into glucose or sugar, which gives us energy. And blood sugar balance refers to keeping that glucose level steady, you know, in balance, not too high, not too low. When our blood sugar is balanced, kind of like our hormones, our energy, focus, and mood are stable. A fascinating aspect of blood sugar is something called the cephalic insulin phase. And I'm not sure if a lot of you have heard about it. But it's pretty fascinating. And this is when your body starts releasing insulin even before you take a bite. Just thinking about it, smelling or seeing food. That's why TV commercials are horrible. This anticipation phase helps prepare your body to handle the upcoming meal and stabilize blood sugar more efficiently. So if you're someone who gets hangry, this phase can be a big player in helping you feel more stable and calm around meals. For example, if you're about to eat lunch and just take a few mindful breaths while looking at your food, you can actually start your body's insulin response, which can make blood sugar responses smoother once you begin eating. So let's talk about why balancing blood sugar isn't only about food, because it really is not. While food is a big part, it's not the whole story, just just like anything in our health. In our health, our hormones, anything at all like that, it's not the whole story. And lifestyle factors like sleep, stress, and physical activity all play massive roles. So let's start with sleep. This is a favorite one of mine, but It's not a lot of favorites of of my clients because uh, this can be a challenging one and it can be pretty, what people may say, boring, the boring phase of it um, compared to all the other pillars that I use in my signature simply um, method. But poor sleep, especially if you're getting less than six to seven hours a night, it makes your body less sensitive to insulin, which means higher blood sugar levels the next day. A study even showed that just one night of poor sleep can make you as insulin resistant as someone who has prediabetes. That's crazy scary, right? So sleep is a huge part of keeping blood sugar balanced. Then there's exercise. When we move, our our muscles use up glucose, which means less glucose stays in the bloodstream, leading to, aha, lower blood sugar. If you're doing regular walks, yoga, or even light strength training, you're naturally helping balance blood sugar. Now onto a big one. This is huge. You always hear me talk about it because it's so big. Stress. When we're stressed, our body releases cortisol, a hormone that raises blood sugar. And this makes sense historically because if we needed energy to fight or flight, 
higher blood sugar would fuel our muscles. But nowadays, our stress is not running from wild animals. It's from work, family, finances, or any, or any of the day-to-day -day anxieties. So let's say that you're dealing with a stressful project at work. Your cortisol levels go up and so does your blood sugar, even if you haven't ate anything. Over time, this can lead to issues with blood sugar balance, insulin sensitivity, and eventually fatigue, mood swings, and that dreadful weight gain around the midline. And the key here is finding ways to manage stress that does not involve food. So breath work, mindfulness practices, and short movement breaks can all help. So one tip that I love is a four, seven, eight breathing technique. So you breathe in for four counts, hold for seven, and exhale for eight. It helps lower cortisol and blood sugar at the same time. So you get a two for one, and also you're regulating your nervous system, and it just like gives you an inner calm throughout the day. So that's something that you can do anytime. And aside from food, here are some really effective non-food habits for managing blood sugar. So of course, I just talked about it, sleep hygiene, um, create a regular sleep schedule, aim for seven to nine hours and try to go to bed and wake up at the same time each day. Um, we really want to work with our circadian rhythm here. And small practices like no screens, I would say like an hour or two before bed or drinking a calming tea can make a huge difference. Uh, but also it could make a difference in your um, bladder too. So maybe stop drinking about maybe like two hours before bed. But daily movement, even short bursts of movement like a 10 minute walk after meals can help regulate your blood sugar. And walking is gentle, it doesn't spike cortisol, which it make, which makes it perfect for daily blood sugar balance. And again, um, it doesn't need to be sprinting, it's not jogging, you're just simply walking. You don't have to go outside to walk after a meal. Just simply stand up, take your plate maybe to the counter, um, and then just kind of walk, walk around your house even. That's just what I'm talking about. Just short bursts of movements after a meal like that can make a huge difference. And again, breathing and meditation. So as I mentioned earlier, stress directly affects blood sugar. So taking just five minutes to do that uh, four, seven, eight breathing, um, or just any deep belly breaths, or just pausing to slow down and stop and just not think about anything. Um, it really does help. Try it. I actually like to do this before meals because it does help with the cephalic insulin phase or even after a stressful day to stabilize the blood sugar. But breathing before meals, pausing to slow down during a meal and those short burst walking after is what I've used with my clients and it, it's a game changer. It really is. It, uh, it helps so many other responses in their body like acid reflux. Um, it helps uh, indigestion, bloating, anything like that. So I would really recommend that you start there. And so finally, let's cover a few practical steps, um, easing tips for balancing blood sugar that you can start to use right away. So eat balanced meals. Aim for a combination of protein, healthy fats, and fiber at each meal. This helps slow the absorption of glucose and keeps energy steady. An example would be eggs with avocado, leafy greens for breakfast, anything like that, you know, pair it all together. And I use this, what's called the magic plate with my clients and it, they just love it so much. At first they're a little bit hesitant and I was too, but once you pair everything together and notice how you feel, it's a game changer. And it's, um, it just gives a steady release of glucose, but pairing it with the protein, healthy fats and fiber really keeps it in balance. And, and you don't have that spike that you would if you were just to eat something alone. And the second one is staying hydrated. So dehydration can increase blood sugar. So aim for water throughout the day, especially before and after meals. If you think you're hungry, it could just be because you actually are really maybe dehydrated and need water. So try that first before reaching for any snacks and just see how you feel. And mindful eating. Take a few moments to breathe 
and observe your food before diving in. Remember that cephalic insulin phase that I discussed earlier? Just slowing down can help your body balance blood sugar more efficiently, and that's what we're aiming for. And the last one, if you need a snack, try pairing a carb with a fat or protein, kind of like um, apple with almond butter. This prevents blood sugar spikes and keeps you feeling fuller longer. So I hope that this helped and it was very informative for you. Um, That's a wrap for today's episode. And I just really hope that it gave you a fresh perspective on blood sugar balancing and just beyond, you know, maybe something else that you may have learned just beyond what you eat. And so by focusing on all these factors like stress, movement, sleep, you can make a real difference in how your body handles that. And if you found today's episode helpful, I'd love for you to leave a a review. It helps others discover the show and keeps things like these important conversations or little tidbit brief episodes going. And thank you so much for joining me today. Here's to balance blood sugar and remember to keep your health and hormones happy. Thank you for tuning in to the Happy Hormones Coach podcast. I hope you found today's episode insightful and empowering. Remember, taking charge of your health is a journey and I'm here to support you every step of the way. If you enjoyed this episode or any of the other episodes, please be sure to share, subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It does help me to reach more women like you who are striving for optimal health and happiness. And don't forget to follow me on social media for daily tips and inspiration. Until next time, stay healthy, stay happy, and keep thriving.